Photoshop is not designed as an animation program. However, if you are familiar with Photoshop for creating digital drawings and artwork, then you can use the timeline feature and maximize all of those skills that you already have in order to create animation. So I'm going to go through a basic workflow of Photoshop and then give you a couple of little add-ons that you can use to make the interface flow a little bit better for an animator. Let's start by creating a new document. And we can use one of these film and video presets uh, so we can get an HD document 1920 by 1080 and we'll just name it something simple like that. So here we are in Photoshop. I just have my plain white background here and I can add layers and do all the things that I normally do in Photoshop. In order to animate, we first need to bring up the timeline window. So if you go up here to window and bring up the timeline, this little timeline shows up down here or it might be floating. I like to dock it down at the bottom so that it doesn't get in the way. And there's nothing in here right now. So what we are going to do is create a video timeline. Very easy, you just click that button. And as you see, we have a layer that has been turned into a video layer. Now, if you zoom into this, you can see that actually it is five seconds long, right? And then we can also see that the frame rate of our timeline is 2997. And this is an important fact that you need to pay attention to at the very beginning, because once you start animating, if you need to change this, then you will end up messing up your animation. It will cut frames in half. There's just this weird way that Photoshop changes frame rates uh, and stuff ends up being missing. So you want to decide at the very beginning what frame rate you are working with. Now, if you're working at 2997, that's great. Animators are working at different frame rates. They might be working at 24 if you're working at film, or maybe you're, you're animating on two, so that's essentially working at a 12 frame per second or a 15 frame per second frame rate. So in order to change that, you go over here to this little hamburger menu and you see this set timeline frame rate. And so I'm going to put in 12 because that's usually what I work at. It's the shortcut for animating on twos. Now, if I zoom in further here, you can see that my one second has now 12 different frame markers on here. So now how do we get to the next step where we're actually putting animation in here? Um, now you don't want to just draw on this layer here because if I draw on here, and I move it along, you see that it, it actually is holding the same throughout this timeline, right? Nothing is changing. So like if I went to the next frame and then I tried to draw again, then it's just adding it to this. So this is basically like a static background layer. You could put your guides on here, or you could draw a background on here, or you can just use this as a white layer because it's plain white and you can add a new transparent layer. Uh, this is always probably a better practice than just drawing on the base white. Let's say I want to put in a ground line. So I can do that as a layer. Um, if I wanted to, I could actually have, notice that wherever my time marker is, that's where it's actually putting the new layer. So um, I'm, I'm having to move it back, so put it there. Um, and let's say I wanted to do a, a guide layer that has like a timing chart on it for, for something. Like this is a motion path that I'm going to use and going to mark out my timing and spacing with a little bit of easing towards the top there. Okay. So uh, I like to name these. This is guide. This is ground. And this is white background. Okay. 
Okay, so we're still static here. We haven't actually done any animation. So how do we do the animation? Over here in this little film icon, we can add a video group. The groups are where the animation frames are collected. So if I add this group and you look over here in the layer section, you see that the icon is this little folder slash clapper from a film set. And this acts like a folder that can hold lots of different layers. So if I have this selected and I make a new layer, it puts in this new layer here, but if I zoom out, I can shorten that layer down to one single frame. And in fact, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to shorten these all to like one and a half seconds. So here I have one single frame, right? And we're going to do our little drawing on this frame, our first drawing. There you go. There's our little character. So how do we get to the next frame? So if I move to the next frame, you see, oh, it disappears, right? Because it's only one frame long. And uh, that's just what we want. So we want more of these one frame bits in here that we can draw. Now, if I go and make another new frame, you see, oh, oh yuck, it's like five seconds long and now I have to shorten it. This is not efficient if you have to do this several hundred times, right? So to make it a little bit more efficient, what you can do is once you have one single blank frame, you can drag that frame and you can copy it by dragging it to the new layer and see that it makes another blank frame right after it. Uh, you can select multiples of these, drag them and copy, and we will keep on doing that until we have a hearty amount of blank frames. So this is basically like preloading your frames. But this way, we don't have to be going through those steps every single time. Now, a little bit later, I'm going to show you this great extension panel that automates a lot of these annoying processes and makes Photoshop animation a lot more friendly for workflow. For now, I want you to see how the logic of Photoshop works. So if you look over here again in the layer panel, you see this video group. It does act just like a folder. You have all these layers, but they're only one frame long, right? Uh, I'm going to rename this to animation. So now we want to do our next frame. We've got our first frame, right? How do we see the previous frame? We need onion skinning. And yes, there is onion skinning. It's over here in this little hamburger menu again. It is enable onion skins. Pretty much anything that you might want to have if it is in Photoshop is going to be in this menu over here. So we'll turn that on and you can see our little friend here. And so now I can draw my next frame, which maybe is going to be And I can go to the next one. Now, here's a little trick for you if you're animating. This is just a general animation trick. On the guide layer, in order to keep your drawing size consistent, you can make a guide for the size and for like the placement of features or something like that. And then you can kind of see it underneath. And then you're sort of always tracing from the same drawing because what happens if you trace straight ahead your drawings will suddenly start to well they won't suddenly they will gradually start to get bigger or smaller depends on the way you draw so i'm putting in about a five frame hold here and actually what i can do now that i've got this uh let's turn and it's getting off for a second and just look at this on its own you can see i've got this little like cycle here if I wanted this to cycle longer, then I can select these frames and I can duplicate them. And now my cycle is 10 frames long. In fact, maybe I'll even do it like a little bit longer. So the reason that the timeline animation works well is that these layers, they function 
similarly to layers in Premiere, to layers in After Effects. Photoshop does have another way of animating. It's called frame animation. You can see down here, there's this little icon, and if you click it, it will switch to frame animation. Now, if you, if you look, it looks like, oh, look at it, we've got all these frames here, right? Um, and we can play it, but the, the problem with this method of animation is that notice how it's actually playing kind of slow. We don't have that frame rate that we're defining. We're defining how long each frame lasts by this sort of random mathematical formula. Like what is 0.08 of a second? I don't know. Uh, get me my calculator, please. And so in order to get your drawing to last the right amount of time, then you need to be able to know what frame rate you're playing at. So if you've been animating this way and it's working for you, that's okay. You can continue that, but just be mindful that your way you're setting, you do need to actually do the math so that you aren't working on fours or on sixes or something like that when you play it back. Like I said, this is a little bit more logical because you can treat it almost like an editing program. You can pick frames up and move them around. You can you can extend frames if you need to, but you always know, okay, I'm working at 12 frames per second. That means this is going to last half a second. Okay, let's get on to a little bit more animation here. There's our cycle, and we want to turn onion skinning back on. So now I'm just going to do a little bit of Oh, in order to draw on the layer, you do have to have it selected. A little bit of anticipation for this creature. So the nice thing about working digitally is that you can draw directly on top of your previous drawing. So let's say I want to start letting this little ball get back to its normal shape, but it also needs to move up, right? So I can use the move tool after I've drawn it and then move it up to the marker. And if I want to, I can even like rotate it a little bit. So it does sort of allow you to make it a little bit easier on yourself. Now, um, the other thing that you can do if you want to is you can make your onion skinning the settings, whatever you like, like if you want to see two frames before or if you want to change the opacity or change the blending mode that can be useful. So now I can see two frames before my blank frame here. And, um, and let's say this, this is getting back to its normal shape. So I'm actually going to trace my template down here. And again, if you note, I am always tracing from the template rather than from the last drawing just to avoid that accidental expansion. My drawings tend to just get incrementally bigger every frame. And I know other people whose drawings just get incrementally smaller. Now, I don't recommend copying and pasting frames because it's very obvious that you copied and pasted. You don't get the line vibration, you don't get the little nuances that come from hand-drawn animation. So I would definitely say, go ahead, use a template, uh, trace your own drawings, but it's much better if you draw every frame rather than copying and then pasting, or copying and pasting parts. I often see people just like copy and paste one part and it's obvious. It's very clear that you copied and pasted. Uh-oh. Uh, so here's something that sometimes happens. Um, if you notice, there's this face up there that's not moving. That's because I accidentally selected this bottom layer, the white layer here. And this sometimes happens with the touch screens. What you can do is you could lock those layers so you don't accidentally do that. Um, I'm going to 
get rid of that and fill it in with some white. All right, we are back in business. Orbiting the Earth. All right, and now we are back to the beginning. So let's see what it looks like. Turn off onion skin. Hit space bar and you can see it playing. Now I can turn off my guide layers here. Oops. All right, a little bit of a volume inconsistency at the bottom there. And they got a little bit sloppy, but otherwise, there you go. Now how to export. So if you just go to file, export, render video. And you have some options here. You can export as an image sequence if you like image sequences, but if you are just doing regular videos, then you can export just to an H.264 video. And you have other options that you can explore. I generally like to transform my frame rate to 24 just to be industry standard. You can export to an image sequence if you prefer. You can do PNGs or JPEGs or TIFFs or whatever. Um, if you do that, you can, if you do PNGs, you can actually have an alpha channel. So this gets useful if you are having lots of different layers and doing compositing stuff in like After Effects or something. But for our purposes, H.264, we're just going to export a regular old video and we're going. Okay, so that's the basic workflow. The last thing that I want to show you is this really great panel. It is a Photoshop extension. It is called Anim Desin. There's also Anim Color. If I turn that on, you see all of these fancy little buttons appear. Uh, so this was designed by an animator, Stefan Baril, who's from France, and he was tired of having to do all of these going into this menu to turn things off and on and having to duplicate frames and all of that. So what he's done is he's automated a lot of those with scripts. And so I can start a new video group, which, oops, it went over here, but that's okay. Uh, let's turn this one off. Let's put this one on top. So that little button has just given me a one frame thing. So if I want to, I can add some hair to my little creature. And then if I want to add another frame, boom. Oh, hey, look at that. All I have to do is hit that button. What if I want to turn onion skinning on? Oh, there's a button here. Yes, this is exactly what I need. So I can add this and I can just go ahead and add his hair. See how much faster this is? So thank you, Stefan. This makes animators' lives easier. There's lots of other features if you wanted to. Let's say you had a keyframe, you could color a frame red so that you could pick it out from the batch. And then you can add another frame here. And then if you were like in between, this becomes very useful and stuff. So I can turn that off, I can make it blue, I can do make it green. It's just really very handy. There's lots of functionalities. He has some tutorials on how to install it and how to use it. So those will be in the links um, in the description of this video for your exploration. And anyway, thanks for watching. Happy animating in Photoshop.